One of the elements of this recipe that's quite different than any of the other hamantaschen recipes that I've been trying out is the addition of lemon zest. And how did I get this lemon zest? Well, by using my lovely old-fashioned microplane grater. You may be saying, hey Deb, that doesn't look like any microplaner, microplane grater I know. That's because you're probably looking at one of these. But I bought this, oh geez, I don't know, at least six years ago, maybe eight years ago. Um, and it's great. It has this long, heavy-duty handle, which is not to say that this isn't heavy-duty and it's great for cheese because this is, of course, the, the coarse grater. But I love this. This is one of my indispensable kitchen tools. Right now, we're at the very beginning of the recipe, and I'm going to cream together the butter, the agave nectar, to which I added the vanilla paste. That's going to take a while to come out of there. Alright. Now let's whip this up just a little bit more because we are creaming the butter. And one of the secrets to making butter adhere better to agave nectar because usually it separates and you can see the little buttery globules is by letting the butter warm to room temperature for a long time, like a couple hours, until you know you can squeeze it and it's pretty mushy. So let's see how we're doing here. Yeah, see this is really nice. It's it's light and fluffy. And now what we're gonna do is add the lemon zest, which I also added the salt to because the recipe calls for some salt. And I'm going to mix that together thoroughly before I add the flour and the other dry ingredients. Right now I'm adding the flour and the baking powder and the other dry ingredients, ingredients in stages. So now I'm going to turn this off and add a little bit more. Um, I used a mixture of regular um, all-purpose flour along with the coconut flour that I've been using in the last few recipes to absorb, there we go, the agave nectar, that liquid sweetener that I use. Okay, let's lock this back down. All right. And now it's blending. I just tasted the dough before I, I added the egg, so um, I could tell you about it without eating any raw egg. The dough itself is pretty crumbly. Um, it's very rich tasting, and the coconut flour is really a, a very dominant flavor, as is the lemon zest. So right now, what I'm going to do is add one egg and one egg white. The recipe tells me to um, reserve the egg yolk, the extra egg, egg yolk, um, to brush on the outside of the cookies when, um, right before I'm ready to stick them in the oven. So now I'm going to incorporate this egg into the dough, which the book says is going to be very cohesive and pretty stiff. So I'm waiting for that to... Uh, to stiffen up. It looks like it's well on its way. I'm going to give it a scrape and then, let's close this down, um, I'm going to scrape this all off and, and give it a little bit more of a mix before um, I wrap it up in a container and stick it in the fridge, uh, refrigerator. They say for at least an hour. Boy, that is stiff. My goodness. I'm not a lefty. But let's see if I can do it with my right hand. Right. Yeah, it, it is pretty stiff. So I'm going to clean this off, stick it in a container, stick it in the refrigerator, and chill it.